Hi, so this is uh, Intro Stats with Matt T. Show, and today we're looking at a problem from my book. Uh, this is uh, section 4A, problem number 30. Um, the problem is about comparing cotinine levels, um, and basically, it's a secondhand smoke. Um, some interesting data. So it says, um, Cotinine is an alkaloid found in tobacco and is used as a biomarker for exposure to cigarette smoke. It is especially useful in examining a person's exposure to secondhand smoke. A random sample of 32 non-smoking Americans adults was collected. These adults were non-smokers and did not live with any smokers. The average cotinine level, I think they mean the mean average cotinine level for this sample was 7.2 and the standard deviation was 5.8. A second random sample of 35 non-smoking Americans was then collected. These did not smoke themselves, but did live with one or more smokers. So the mean average cotinine level for this sample was 28.5 and a standard deviation of 11.4. Use a 1% significance level to test the claim that people that do not live with smokers have a lower cotinine than those that live with smokers. So let's be clear, none of the people in this data, in either data set, smoke but some of them live with smokers and some would don't. And again, they're saying that the people that do not live with smokers have a lower cotinine uh, level than those that live with smokers. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make group one the um, people that um, live with, uh, do not live with smokers and group two the people that live with smokers and then that way I can just say group one is lower or less than group two. That sounds like that's gonna be a left tail test. Alright, so let's take a look at the numbers down here. They plugged in the data into Staccato and um, we got a test statistic of negative 9.758, p-value very close to zero. This times 10 to the negative 13 means um, move the decimal 13 places to the left. So it's like 12 point 12 zeros and then one four, so very close to zero. So this is looking very significant here. All right, so let's take a look. So again, our, our mu1 is the population mean average for uh, cotinine level for those that do not live with smokers. Mu2, population mean average for those that live with smokers. My claim is that mu1 is less than mu2. That's my claim. My null hypothesis is gonna be uh, mu1 equals mu2, or you could write mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2 if you want. Um, this will be a left tail test. Uh, okay, so our assumptions, both samples were collected randomly. Again, small random samples from large populations are not, are usually not uh, going to get people that were related to each other. Uh, the, both the sample sizes were over 30, so we're going to pass the 30 or normal. It did not tell us what the shapes were, which I wish I would have known what the shapes were. But it's still going to pass because both samples were over 30. Our test statistic was negative 9.758. That's a t-test statistic. That's a very significant t-test statistic. T's get significant around two standard errors. This is nine standard errors. That's a lot for a t. So the sample mean cotinine for those that do not live with smokers was 9.758 standard errors below the sample mean cotinine for those that do live with smokers. That's very significant. Definitely going to fall in the tail determined by the critical value. What was the critical value again? Let's take a look. The critical value was negative 2.4. So even like negative 3, negative 4 would have been significant. Negative 9 is way significant, really in the left tail. So definitely the sample data dis significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis. Our p-value was really close to zero. So if the null is true, there's a 0% probability of getting the sample data more extreme by sampling variability. We got a low p-value. So it's very unlikely to have occurred by sampling variability. Since we rejected the null, but the claim was the opposite, right? The claim was the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to support the alternative. So there is significant evidence to support the claim that the population mean cotinine level for those that do not live with smokers is significantly lower than for those that do live with smokers. So, um, so we got this cotinine levels were significantly different for the groups. So this would indicate that living with a smoker or not is related to secondhand smoke inhalation, the cotinine level. In fact, if this was an experimental design, this would go beyond that. This would actually prove that um, living with a smoker 
does um, uh, increase your cotinine level, um, kind of showing uh, firsthand that uh, the the smoke inhalation. All right.